Welcome back to the football terrace. The Manchester derby awaits us. We're going to do an all-time Premier League combined 11 tonight. 4-4-2 is the formation. And what an illustrious, beautiful, gorgeous panel we have for you. And just ahead of time, in case anyone's wondering, we have not just one, but we have two Manchester City fans on the panel tonight to give us their views, to give us their opinions. Met them before, but we're going to do the introductions as usual. First off, we're going to go to the rivals. We always throw rivals on here on the Football Terrace. First channel in the history of football fan content to do this, where it might be Man United, Chelsea, it might be Man United, Man City, but we always throw in a few, a few, a few cats amongst the pigeons. And yes, Jim, I do know the saying. But first guest today is the man I mentioned. His man like Jim, looking slick, looking ready, hair looking. What are you saying? Honestly, this guy's got the best lockdown hair ever. The sides are always. <laughs> We've got David with the worst lockdown hair ever. Honestly, sitting there. That's why he has a hood up. Because that hair should be is illegal in, in many parts of the world. From a Man United point of view tonight, the host of that United show, the Scotsman's here. There he is. It's man like Bits and Bob sitting there in the studio. And that, that top behind you used to fit in before lockdown, but all the Pringles and burgers <laughs> have put a lot of weight on him. And we've got man next... Don't worry, his face hasn't become flatter. It's just the angle of his camera. It's man like Danny in the house with the orange earphones looking good, looking sick. Look at the camera quality there. You can honestly, you can really see how ugly he is with that quality of camera. It's amazing. You really, really can. And next up, the city fans are in the house, backed by popular demand again. It's Lady Yan, the best City fan on social media. There's no doubt about it. Um, barring our next guest, who is also equally as good, I realise what I just said, making her debut on the football terrace, a proud Cockney mank just like myself. It's Rose in the house, making her football terrace debut, or at least with me. She's probably been on Midnight Vibes. KJ has everybody on Midnight Vibes. There's no doubt about it. Make sure you're smashing that like button. Share the stream now on your social media platforms. And let's get straight into it, people. How are you all doing? How's everyone doing? Sorry for the insults. Some of you got insulted. The ladies didn't. The ladies had nice compliments. The gentlemen, I thought I'll have to. I'll have a little bit of a pop. I'll have a little bit. Abuse, of a pop. Abuse, abuse, bro. It's it's all good. It's all good. It's just it's banter, as Richard Keys would say. <laughs> um, United boys, how are you feeling ahead of tomorrow? Are you feeling a little bit like me? You feeling a little bit nervous? Um, a little bit, but you know, um, I'm calm. I'm calm. Obviously, speaking um, backstage there with the ladies, um, Rose is kind of giving me a little bit of confidence, actually. So, listen, all I'm going to say, there's no embarrassment getting beat off City, Terry. That's all I'm going to say. There's no embarrassment true? getting beat off City. I hear that. Saying? How about, how about um, you, Danny? How are you feeling ahead of the game? We're going to get battered. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh, and Rose, welcome to the Football Terrace. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Are you as confident as Danny is sort of negative and, 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 and lacking in confidence ahead of tomorrow? Um, listen, I'm confident. Um, we're on a great run. Um, 21 wins, you know, in a row. Um, but, you know, it's a derby. And, you know, anything can happen in a derby. Um, so... You know, United, I think they've drawn their last three matches, I think. I think I don't even think they've even scored in their last three matches. Nope. Um, but like I said, form goes out the window in a derby and anything can happen. So, But I do still expect City to win with the form that we're in right now. So, yeah, I'm still going for a City win. Uh, and I hear that. And Jan's back with us two days on the bounce. Just, I just think ready to rub salt into our wounds tomorrow, aren't you? You're just getting, gearing it ready. And it's Neeks. You're going to give it to Neeks more than anybody else, I can tell. It's going to absolutely dog him tomorrow. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, sorry, go on. It's, it, it's a derby, isn't it? So it's just, it's not, it's never easy to predict. That's all I'll say. It's not as straightforward as it might seem. <laughs> No, and I do understand that. Tonight, though, we're going to have a little bit of fun. This is probably the most amount of fun any Man United fan is going to have this weekend in relation to football. We're picking a Premier League all-time 11 and, of course, the GOAT during the Premier League era. We're going for a 4-4-2. We're going to start off with the goalkeeper. First of all, making his pick for the goalkeeper. I'm probably going to pick two or three of you for each position to make your pick rather than every single person. If you massively object to something somebody said, interject. But first up, choosing his goalkeeper. And there are four choices. You've got Schmeichel, Edwin van der Sar, 
Edison or David De Gea, who are you going to pick to be your goalkeeper? Bits and bobs. I didn't say your name, did I? Oh, I was wondering. I was like, who? who is <laughs> uh, uh, Van der Sar. Oh, why? I think in the era that we did dominate, um, even with Rio and Vida, he brought a lot of calmness. He also obviously saved the penalty that helped us win this, the champ Champions League. For me personally, um, he, he just brought calmness. He didn't speak too much, but when he did, we always felt his um, presence. So, yeah, for me, Van der Sar, definitely. Schmeichel, Schmeichel close second, but for Van der Sar, nah. It was a bit more class with Van der Sar when he was being a goalkeeper. So, yeah, Van der Sar for me. I hear that. How about yourself, Rose? Who would you pick uh, to be the all-time best Premier League goalkeeper out of uh, Manchester teams? I'm going to go with Peter Schmeichel. Um, I think he was, you know, he was part of the um, United Trouble Winners. Um, his legacy as well, like the fact that I think he he was one of the first goalkeepers that were doing that, and you know, this whole star jump save. His legacy is incredible. Um, but yeah, on top of that, like just the fact that um, I think he won like five Premier League trophies as well um, with United. Um, I, honestly, I think with the list, um, Edison. Edison's not, he's not better than Smichael yet. Obviously, he could be in the next, you know, few years. But I think just Smichael, I, I even think that Smichael has never, ever actually um, lost a derby. I think even when he was at City as well, he never lost the derby. So, yeah, like, honestly, Smichael. Michael. Yeah, I, I I I agree with you on that. Interestingly, what, one of the things I want to say to the audience that we spoke about behind, I probably should have set the scene for the audience, is its overall quality, but also that individual's performances in derbies. And I do believe you're right. I don't think Schmeichel's uh, ever, been on, ever been on the losing end of a Manchester derby. puts him there. Anybody disagree with Schmeichel? I think it should be somebody else. Remember, he did play for City, though, Terry. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, but he won Man I'm really sorry to say, he won Man United a damn treble, bruv. The most historic moment <laughs> in the history of, of British football. He was the goalkeeper. Um for that. And I know he came back and played for City, but that was when City, and I mean, if we respect Yan and Rose, but he played for City when no one really cared. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't a thing. It was where you went to retire type thing. Uh, Danny, who'd be your pick, bro? Oh, for goalkeeper? Yeah. Schmeichel. There's no one else to pick. He's the best Premier League goalkeeper ever. Simple as that. Like, it's just, he's just, you talk about present, shot stopping, intimidating people, just off reputation. Like people would get one on one with him and they'd miss because it's Schmeichel, you know, doing the star jump, like a role said. So, yeah, no, for me, it's Schmeichel. I, I hear you on that. How, how about the sort of rivals here, Jem, David? Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, I think if you look at the stats, they're, they're, they're pretty close to each other. They both played near enough the same 310 odd appearances, 132 clean sheets for Pete, uh, for Van der Sar, 128 for Schmeichel. Um, with him in goal, Schmeichel with 175. With Van der Sar, it's 166, um, but they've lost less with Peter Schmeichel in goal with 55. So I think Peter Schmeichel was a good shot. I think for what he's done at Manchester United, uh, the, the treble winning side as well, 100%, I'd say Peter Schmeichel. OK, well, listen, most of the votes have gone there to Peter Schmeichel, so we're definitely we're going to throw him into the mix and put him in as a goalkeeper for now. What I think is going to heat things up a lot more, and we're going to go to Jan first on this. We're looking at fullbacks here. Who would be... We we'll go left back. I mean, left back might be easier than right back. Who are you picking for left back? Okay. Well, City haven't had the best left backs. Um, obviously, I think the last time we had a great one was probably like Glim Pada uh, a long time ago. Um, so yeah, I think recently we've had sort of cliche color of they don't go in over <laughs> Man United's players. Um, so it had to be between sort of Irwin or ever, but I would give it Owen. He was part of the treble winners, I think. Um, yeah, and he, he won everything with Man United, so I would give it him. <laughs> Gotta be him. I'd love to put a City player, but a left back. Can't really argue I, with anyone at City. I hear you on that. <laughs> Can I just they, say, I loved gone. it when Clichy and Colorado were left backs for City. They were so unreliable. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. They're part of the reason why City never yeah. retained the title. In that period, love yeah. those two players, legends for me. I uh, put them in the team if you want. That's how much I love those two. <laughs> <laughs> how about yourself, David? Who would be your pick for left back? Um, again, I wasn't alive when he was playing, but 
Dennis Irwin is clearly the best left back out of either of the two teams, so I'd give it Dennis Irwin. Bits and bobs. 100% Dennis Irwin. 100%. It's not an argument. <laughs> Close case. Dennis Irwin, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, what listen, I... Do you know what? You could, you, you, could, you could chuck in Evra, but we'd be saying Evra just on because of... Um, because of... Um, what's happened in the media and just like recently and stuff. But Dennis Owen, come on. Yeah, man. He, he took free kicks as well. We need to remember that. Yeah, and you know I'd say about Dennis Owen know. as well. The reason, the reason, yeah, the reason I'm sorry, yeah, and the re reason I would put Dennis Irwin in is because he was a right back that was world class at left back. Mm. Mm. It's he played everyone thinks of him as a left back, but what not yeah. a lot of the youngsters, so David's generation might not realize that he was mm -hmm. actually a right back and he moved across. It's like taking Trent and putting him into a left back role and him being as good. Well, actually, not defensively for Trent, but do you know what I mean? It's one of them <laughs> ones. Uh, yeah, and you were gonna say something. Sorry. No, I was just saying he scored penalties for you as well. So. I mean, he was a, they might, you know, I mean, he, he's the, the, the original Fernandez, you know what I mean? Original Fernandez uh, <laughs> putting him in. So I think that's fair. Right back. I only sort of feel there's there's two or three that can go in here. Zabaleta, Gary Neville, maybe Walker. What do you think, Rose? Who would you pick as the best right back in, in the Premier League era across both clubs? Um, can I just say, um, like before I mention this player, I think Zabaleta was absolutely exceptional for Man mm. City. Um, he won like two Premier League titles for us. He scored the key goals for us, even against QPR. People always forget that he scored um, against QPR. We always think of Aguero's goal. Um, so, yeah, he has scored key goals for us. Um, and honestly, like, he just truly loved Manchester City Football Club. And, um, yeah, but... Um, <laughs> the, the best right back. Um, I'm going to have to go with Gary Neville, you know, part of the trouble winners. I mean, he's, yeah, he was just ex an exceptional player. The fact that he was, you know, a United fan and um, he was passionate about the club, like he fought for every single, you know, ball. Um, I've got to give it to Gary Neville. Yeah. I, I, I respect that. How about, you, how about yourself, Bobs? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I echo everything she, uh, Rose said there. Um, the thing about Gary Neville, isn't it? Gary Neville will always tell you he was not the best on the ball, but he could cross, um, but he could defend. And, yeah, I mean, he's been through it all. He ended up being captain for us. He won us trophies. He won the league. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Zabela, he'd done a few good things, but it's clear. Gary never was clear, 100%. No, nah, he's not clear at all. He's not clear, clear at all. Yeah. Um, what? Well, because Zabaleta was better on the ball Zabaleta than Gary was a better... Zabaleta, for one, was a better player than Gary Neville. And yeah. quite frankly, without Gary Neville, we still win all those trophies. Treble, mm. any any period you want, back to back league titles, three league titles in a row, we win without Gary Neville. I don't know if City, because of the two dodgy left backs I mentioned before in Colorado and Clichy, if they didn't have a good quality right back or a world class right back on the right hand side, I'm not sure City win two league titles in a row. So, but Danny, what about the partnership not, done the right hand side? Sorry, they didn't win two in a row. They won one, didn't win it, then they won. But like, I, I don't think they win a title without a, a top quality right back. So I'd go Zabaleta over Gary Neville for that reason. And he was a better player. How about I, yourself? I think he was a better player. How about yourself, Jim? I think Gary Neville's always been Mr. Consistent, but he was technically not a gifted player. Um, a leader, yes. But if you're talking about what you want from your right back, I think I'd agree with Danny. I'd say Zabaleta. I think he's better on the ball, better going forward with the ball. He could defend as well. I think overall, if you're talking about the overall player and what they can bring to the team, I'd throw Zabaleta in, 100%. Can I just say, he was a better defender as well because he could defend one-on-one. Yeah, -on -one. Exactly. Gary Neville weren't a great one-on-one -on -one defender. Mm. Gary well, Neville was good Neville at... defended against, though. He played against proper strikers. Look what he defended against. against. No, but look at look at the era Gary never played football in. He played against proper strikers and proper attackers. Come on, man! Like yeah, he's basic he's though. Bob. He was a basic oh, right on. back. It was nothing great. I don't want to argue. Sorry, Terry, right back. I don't want to argue, but you know, I've got what we're here to do. How about you know yourself, Bob? You... Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. Danny. Yeah, go, go with yeah. Who would you go with? You know what? I actually had Zabaleta in my side. Um, no disrespect to Gary Gary Neville, but I just think you know. Um, I thought I did take into the con into consideration the derby element, um, and Zabaleta was always up for a derby. He was willing to get in there and fight if he had to. Um, so yeah, I actually did have Zabaleta in there. Um, but yeah, I'd, it's it's one of them, isn't it? They both won stuff with the club. Um, you know, you can argue about 
sort of when they played, but can't really be too much of an argument because you know then no one knew would get in. So you know, I, 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 I hear that. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you there, David. Um, personally, I I go Gary Neville simply because Gary Neville reminds me of when I play football. I play yeah. right back myself. Not to, I'm technically I'm pretty awful. I can't lie. Technically I'm awful. <laughs> I can I can defend and I can cross. So I've always loved Gary Neville. And my biggest memory of Zabaleta <laughs> is him getting spun and sat on his ass by Eden Hazard. Yeah, Hazard yeah, yeah. So yeah. like yeah, it's got to be Gary Neville for me. So we're on. It's three three in terms Ooh. of voting. So I get the deciding vote on this. Um, I'll be really honest. I picked. Zabaleta for my team. Um, I love Gary Neville with, with a passion. I think he was a wonderful Manchester United man. If I remove that bias, I, I do think Zabaleta was a better overall football player and defender. So trying to put all bias aside, um, I'm going to take... Uh, Gary Neville's not going to be in it, and I am going to give that position to uh, Zabaleta. Can't find him. There he is. We're going to move him into the team there. So he is in. Try not to be biased there, but Zabaleta goes into the team um, sorry, let me scroll back up there. As you can see, centre back pairing is, is, is the next element, and this is again, it's it's a difficult one to nail it down to two people with the quality that both teams have have had over the years. Uh, I'm going to go to Danny. Devil in the details first on this. Who would be your centre back pairing? Oh, the pairing. It has to be real and Yapstam. If I like, like, could you imagine oh, those two together? Oh my god, that is perfection! One on one defending, strength, good in the air. Uh, Rio can play out from the back, and just of course, Yap Stam, just one of the best pure defenders we've ever seen in the Premier League. Um, World class centre back. So I think that that centre back partnership. Let's just keep it real. City can't City can't deal with that. Even a City team now, I don't care if they win four in a row. I wouldn't pick any of their centre backs: Diaz, Laporte, John Stones. Like no, Dimichilis, who who David mentioned off stream, company was good, but he wasn't reliable because he was never fit. So, yeah, no, for me it's Yapstam and Real Ferdinand. Rose, who would be your centre back pair? Um, I've gone for company. Um, like I said, um, before, um, I think company is was just the soul and the heartbeat of you know, you know, during that era, um. So it's definitely got to be company. He was a leader on and off the pitch. Yes, we understand that, you know, sometimes he was plagued with, like, injuries. He had injuries here and there. Um, but even when he came back from injury, you know, he was he was just always reliable when, when he was fit. I mean, I remember when we, um, I think it was the season when we, yeah, we won the league. Um, off Liverpool, so I think he scored that vital goal um, against Leicester. Um, so, like, he, he's also scored like just so many key goals for us as well. And um, I, I just got to say, company, like, it just has to be company. Um, but this this second um, player for me is quite difficult. And for me, it's, it was between Rio and Vidic. Um, it's it's hard. I think they were both exceptional. Um, I think I would just go with Vidic. If, honestly, if, oh god, if, you just like hard men. That's no, what it is. No. Yeah. <laughs> like tough guys. You like tough guys. That's what it is. <laughs> they were just beasts. Um, but I think I'm just gonna go Vidic. Yeah. There we go. This is a vote for each of them so far. I'm gonna go to David here from a from a neutral's point of view. Who will be your pairing, bro? Um, my pairing is Rio and company. I think Rio, Rio is, apart from jo apart from John Terry, probably the best centre back that's been in the Prem. And com company is literally Man City. Whenever I think Man City, I think company. I always hated playing against him. He scored. He did score. He scored a winning goal in the derby as well. And that's part of the part of what we're good talking about. You guys as well. Yeah, he did. So you know, I hear you on that. Je Go Gem, I from a, from a from a rival point of view. Rio Ferdinand, one hundred percent, because I rate him so highly. I think he's an absolutely exceptional defender. Pace, good in the air. The reading, he read the game so well. He could recover like he he was so good. Uh, the second one was hard for me, but I get Yapstam. I really do. Danny Sam, but I think without Vincent Company in that Man City team, I don't think they would have won the Premier League. 
yeah. back then, back then. So I think it was that. I think it was that important for Man City that they didn't have many leaders. You could probably say Yaya Torre. Other than that, Vincent Company was was the man. So I want to say Vincent Company, Rio Ferdinand. Yen. Yeah, I also went with Rio Ferdinand and um, Vincent Company. Can't deny what Rio did for Man United. Um, in terms of company, he has to be in there. We're talking Manchester derbies. He was up for a Manchester derby. Man United <laughs> didn't win too many times when he was in the squad. You know, um, he's won goals to win us the league over Man United. He definitely has to be in there. Um, he was a leader on and off the pitch. Um, fantastic player. And I agree. Like, if you look at some of the players that company won the league alongside, you know, there was one season where we won the league and Demma Kalis played 24 games that season. So, you know what I mean? I, I feel like Man United, some of the names mentioned, they had a quality player next to them. Company didn't always have that quality player next to him and he still yeah. made our defence what it was. So, has to be company. Um, and, and I'd say has to be Rio, to be honest. Yeah, I hear you on that. Can I, I mean, just ask a question? For the people that have picked company, do you really believe he's a better defender than Yapstam? Do people really believe that? That pains you, Danny, isn't it? That pains mm. you. He's not, not a better defender than Yapstam. I'm, again, never watch Yapstam. Can't make it. And Yapstam you know on a treble. Like, do, you know like, do you know what? Again, it's a tough one. It, it, it yeah. is a tough one. From, yeah. from my point of view, the way I look at it is quite simple, really. I love, again, Yap. I, I was 13, 14 years old when we won the, when we won the treble. So I remember it like vividly. He was such a good defender. <sighs> Do I actually think he was a better defender than Vidic, Rio and company? The only thing I would say he doesn't have on his side when you're picking an all-time Premier League team is he wasn't here long enough. He only did, what, two or three seasons with us? Three seasons, yeah. So I, I think that's the only... In terms of overall quality, I, I think he may be better, but he didn't He didn't have the longevity in the league that the others did. And because of that, I, I would I would go with Rio and, and company. I just... Do you know what? A fit Rio and a fit company next to each other, mm. they're pomp. You're winning. You, I don't think you're conceding about eight goals a season tops. Like you yeah. legitimately are. You're not conceding goals, and I could argue the same with 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 Yapstan. But I'd go with that. Um, we've picked them. That's who's in the team because they've already got enough votes. They can't come out. Just out of interest, Bob, who do you've gone with, mate? Uh, I was going to go with Rio and Vida just because they actually did play together. Um, probably the best partnership in the Premier League football in, in their era. They won yeah. leagues. Yeah, dominated right. football and they won Champions League. I'm just saying, you know, we're talking about oh, imagine if company and Rio, but actually Rio and Vidic did actually play together, defended well, won titles together, dominated English football. So I hear what everyone's saying. I respect their opinion. However, why are we dreaming of a partnership when we actually had the dream partnership? So, yeah, well, your point, your point about them being the best. I mean, they they have the best uh, defensive record part uh, or a partnership out there. I think as a partnership as well, they won the most amount of leagues and they won a Champions League and everything together. So I, I, to I totally get that. That makes a lot of sense. So that's a backline pick. Remember, viewers, we will open the book for you to have your super chats and move this team around when we're fully picked. We're now moving on to the midfielders. We've got to pick four. Uh, Right-sided, left-sided, and, and we'll pick a centre-back pairing together. We're going to start off with the right-hand side. And I mean, there are two players that stand out massively, massively to me when we look at the right-hand side. Cristiano Ronaldo, David Beckham are the two standouts to me that played in those positions. Uh, first of all, I want to go to Jem on this one. Who would be your pick for the right-hand side? It's got to be Nazri, isn't it? Nazri was world class. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> no, serious, for me, oh, this is a tough one because they're both. It's, it's got to be Beckham, Beckham or Ronaldo. I think when you look at it, David Beckham, he was he was immense. Like free kicks, leader, um, didn't have didn't have the best pace, you know. But overall, he was a top player. And you look at Cristiano Ronaldo when he's at Man United and what he did over the, the seasons that he was there, all the goals he scores, all the contributions. Um, how Fergie moulded him into what he was when he left, you know, to go to Real Madrid, top player. I'm gonna go with. Ah, oh, this is I'm gonna go Cristiano Ronaldo. 100%. Best player, I'd say. Pretty best player ever in the Premier League, in my eyes. Up there with top three. I hear, I hear that. R Rose, how about yourself? Would you go with uh, R Ronaldo or Beckham, or is there someone else that stands out for you for the right-hand side? Um, I think Cristiano Ronaldo's, yeah, like he's up there with Messi. We know he's like the best player ever. Um, can I just, obviously, like, I'm just thinking of the formation that I'm going with. Um, like, I really want to get De Bruyne in the team. 
Um, so I'm mentioning De Bruyne. I don't like. I'd still pick Ronaldo, but there is like an argument for steady. Rose, steady. <laughs> Rose, steady. <laughs> what? The complete midfield, like he's like the complete midfield player. Like honestly, I, I I hear that. I suppose the only way you you make that work if you kind of do a four-two-two diamond. And, and you put him in there. So if you want to put your vote in for KDB, we can certainly do that. Um, there's no problem with that one at all. Daniel. Danny. Sorry, I don't want to call you Daniel. I never called you Daniel before. Uh, Danny, what That's are you cool. saying? Just listen, I'm not, I'm not going to be long, mate. It's Ronaldo. What I would say, though, is De Bruyne with his skill set in the 90s and early 2000s could have played in a 4-4-2 on the right with his ability mm. the same yeah. way Beckham did because he's actually a more talented he's football player. He's, David fast, he's fast as well. He's fast yeah. as well. So, yeah, I hear so that. that's not a bad point from Rose, but it's Ronaldo. And Jim made that so much harder than it was. It's Ronaldo. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not hard. David, what are you saying? He won a Ballon d'Or in the in England. He's just the best player that's played in this league. It is Ronaldo. Just, just is like there is no argument there. I I hear you on that, Jan. <laughs> yeah, I had Cristiano. Even though we yeah. used to get ten hobbies, I remember. Um, but yeah, it, overall. Ronaldo. Yeah, stamped, I don't know who he stamped on. I swear, yeah, I remember getting him sent off in those games. Yeah, he was a bit of flair. He got sent off a few times in the Premier League. Cristiano did. I think an Ed Butt as well against Portsmouth, if I'm not mistaken. Um, bits and bobs. Yeah, it's clear, Ronnie man. Of course, Ronaldo. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> yeah, no, I, again, I, I hear that. It's, it's such a hard one to not put him in. Left hand side. I'm going to go to Danny first on this one. Who would be your left sided midfielder? <sighs> Left-sided midfielder. Who are the options other than Giggs? Uh, I, I put Raheem Sterling in there as an option. Um, I, I really couldn't think of a, a... Again, I couldn't think of a City attacking player on the left that I'd put in... I don't know. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'd put into an all-time great conversation, barring Raheem Sterling, who I think has put himself into a position now to be spoken about as one of the best players that's played for either of the Manchester clubs in the Premier League era. You know what? He's done better than Giggs. <sighs> Man, this is hard. Believe it or not, I can't believe I'm gonna. I'm gonna put Sterling in there. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna put Raheem Sterling in there because his outputs are just insane. I don't think he actually gets the respect that he deserves. So that's why I'm gonna put him in this team, just so I give him the respect he deserves. Is easily one of the best left back. Sorry, one of the best left wingers in Premier League history if not potentially the best. When it's all said and done, when his career is over, people are going to look back the same way we do with Michael Carrick and be like, oh, why was there ever a debate whether or not he was world-class? We'll do that with Raheem Sterling. So I'm going to put him in the team because his outputs are just insane. Like, Giggs can't match his outputs. Um, he's improved. Um, he's still getting better. And again, it's just the goals. Goals from the left wing, and he still does what a classic winger does. Sets people sets people up, dribbles past people. So yeah, I'm going with Sterling. How about yourself, Bits? Ryan Giggs. Listen, the accolades are there for itself. When he couldn't run, he basically adjusted his game, came inside. Listen, Sterling is a great player and will probably go and do an absolute madness. However, of all time, against Giggs's accolades, the moments, your individual moments, I don't care, whatever, the moments, the joy he brought us against Arsenal. Uh, we all know the goal. Listen, Ryan Giggs, 100%. 100%. Like, at what age he started that as well? And then he played with, like, all the teams? Nah, Ryan Giggs. Ryan Giggs, 100%. We all know the song. Come on. R Rose, what would what you, you, you make what Danny said there about Raheem Sterling? Would you put him in at this point over Giggsy, or, or do you think he's got a way to go yet? Um, I, I still think Sterling has got a bit of... Yeah, Sterling's not as good as Giggs yet. Um, but he, he could be. He could be eventually. Um, but, you know, based on the formation that I'm going with, I know this is, you might just disagree, but I'm going to put in David Silva just based purely on the formation that I'm going with. Um, I think, you know, David Silva is one of the, the best foreign players that's ever, you know, come into the Premier League. Um, I mean, just his technical ability, um, you know, just a, like just what he offered, like he was just con a consistently great player. I mean, 
I mean, when he first came, like we all thought that, you know, maybe he might struggle. I mean, I mean, the media was saying that he might struggle in the Premier League because he's quite a small player. But I can't think of a time when, you know, David Silva actually ever struggled in the Premier League. Like he's just a gifted, gifted player. Um, so I would put him in there over Raheem Sterling. Um, but obviously I know there's still a debate, you know, between Gibbs. But yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, do you know what? I, I, I hear where you're coming from there. David. Uh, yeah, it's just gigs. Uh, I got, I don't have much more. It just, I like, I was, he's in the league for how he's been in, he's been in the league old, longer than I've been alive. That's that is that simple. Like, it is gigs. I, I, you can't argue with this. Is why I said we should have gone 4 3 3 because then I could have got more city players in, but you, you, you said 4 4 2, so now you've done yourself in. Well, we, we, we agreed. It was, it was that. Jan, who would you go with in this? Yeah, this is where it becomes difficult because, yeah, like I said, the formation. Um, obviously, I would have put Raheem Sterling in. Um, I agree he's a little bit underrated. I think people kind of don't play a lot of what he does. That being said, we've got to take into account the derby aspect. He hasn't been great in Manchester derbies. Yeah. So, for that reason, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put him in the team. Ryan Giggs, obviously, he's been there so long. People are always going to argue for him. Um, I don't know, maybe if Raheem Sterling retires at Man City at 40 years old, does he have 13 titles? Probably, or maybe, who knows? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think it's one of them things that I just think because he was there so long, people are always going to put him in. I just yeah. have yeah. three other midfielders along with Cristiano Ronaldo that I would put in my team um, and none of them are gigs. Um, I think there's one Man United player that has to get in there, no doubt. Um, and I think I would I would put two City players in because we're not just talking about Premier League all time. We're talking about Manchester derbies and David Silva. Boy, did he turn up! You yeah. know, um, every derby he's there. He for me, he's got to be in this team. There's no way that we can have this team without David Silva. Um, people can laugh all they want, but. Mm. Yeah, Manchester Derby is like, you know, <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way that David Silva doesn't get in this team. Sorry, I've got music so playing from somewhere where it is. I think there might be an advert playing on something I'm looking at. Sorry, I have to mute that because sorry about that. No, do you know the David Silver one is, is such an interesting one for me because everybody knows how much I rate him. I think that he, he is so. Uh, I think he's so disrespected in in the game of football that there's no there's no doubt about that whatsoever. I think he is. Ryan Giggs, though, sometimes feel people sleep on him considering what he did. Ryan Giggs also missed out of a lot of Manchester derbies because City weren't in the same league as him for many years. Like that that's the fact. Like many many years that he didn't get to play against him. So like Raheem Sterling has only he's played nineteen. Manchester, like Manchester Derby's uh, already in his career and he's only 26 years of age. Giggs only played 29 and he, he retired at 40. Like Giggs didn't get the opportunity to play in as many. Ryan Giggs got 14 assists and four goals. So he got 18 goal contributions in 29. No player's ever got that. Me there are many players that like Rooney played as many Manchester Derby's as Ryan Giggs. And he got 11 goals and three assists. Like Ryan Giggs, it's only Chelsea. And I didn't realize this. I did the research today. Only Chelsea has Ryan Giggs created more goals against. He got that's why I found out Chelsea fans hate him because he got 15 assists against them in, in his yeah. career. But that, you know, but that was in 40 games. So he got 15 assists against Chelsea in 40 games. Against City, it was 14 in 29 games, which is just sensational. And I often think Giggs just kind of a little like a bit a little bit like David Silver. I think people sleep on him a little bit. Um who hasn't gone yet? Who hasn't voted me, on this one? Me, me, yeah, me, me. Yeah, say, no, it's, e it's easy. It's, um, it's gigs. It's, you know, clutch moments. I don't think Raheem Sterling's, de Raheem Sterling's there yet, to be honest, in terms of yeah. everything. I mean, you've got to look. Raheem Sterling ain't won a Champions League. Giggs has. Do you know what I mean, Giggs has done more. He's won more. He's, he's played more. He's achieved more. Clutch moments, like I said, big, big player. So it has to be Ryan Giggs. If we're talking about the all-time eleven, it's got to be Ryan Giggs. One, two, definitely. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. You know why is this, why is Sterling? I don't know what Danny said. Sterling. I still can't get that one out of my head. Make no sense. <laughs> uh, do, no. Do you know what? I, I get where he's but I get where he's coming from. With, I get where he's coming from with Raheem Sterling. I do because I think Raheem Sterling for me is 
people again some people just sleep on him and i don't know whether it's a city if thing. he had sorry terry if he had the same career he's had now but for liverpool it'd be a different conversation that's the only i agree danny i agree completely i think he gets in for his man city career <laughs> mad if we just look at his outputs as an attacking player which is the most important element it's 113 goals and 85 assists so that's almost 200 goal contributions in 278 games. And people have got to remember, he went there as a young man. And in two, you don't normally start peaking in, in terms of scoring sort of 20, 30 plus goals or creating 20, 30 plus goals a season until you're in your early mid 20s and beyond. And this kid is he's sensational in his career in total. It's, he's played four, if it, it's like 400 games he's played. And he has nearly, nearly 300 goal contributions in 400 games. Yeah, it's like I said to a lot of people in, in the modern day era, you're not, you know, when people say things like, um, they come out with nonsense, like, I oh, don't look at stats when it comes to judging players. You can't find in an attacking sense a star player that doesn't have good stats. <laughs> They've all got good nah, stats. Yeah. You wouldn't say they were good if they were just dribbling around but doing nothing at the end of it. So Raheem Sterling is a good shout for the future. And there's one thing that's really standing out to me when it comes to these all time teams. In another five, six years, I do think these kind of conversations are going to be very different when it comes to uh, City being involved because City are really building their legacy now and been doing it for the last seven, eight years. And and, and it's it's paying off because I think Raheem Sterling's at, at, at that age. If City keep winning like they are, he could retire easily with seven, eight, nine, ten league titles and scoring sort of 200, 300 goals, assisting another. He really will be in the equation for these kind of conversations, there's no doubt. Next up, central midfield pairing. Mm. This is the, the real big one. And I don't really mind how you guys want to do this, whether you want to go for a flat two, one in front of the other, because I've kind of I've kind of done that with mine in relation to what I went with and what I picked. I want to go to Rose first on this. Who would be your two to play in central midfield? Um, I'm going to go with Yaya Toure and Paul Squalls. Um, Yaya Toure, I mean, he was just a beast. I mean, when he first came, I think the media was saying that he was just going to be like another holding um, midfielder for City. He was going to be like a Gareth Barry or a De Jong, but no. What he offered at City was just absolutely incredible. I mean, I don't know if you remember that 2013-14 season where I'm not being funny. That literally, like, his contribution as a midfielder was exceptional in that season. I mean, the fact that he scored, what, 10, I think it was like 10 free Tw kicks, I think, you know, like 30 Tw yeah. 20 goals he scored in that season. I was even talking about his free kicks, mm. but yeah, 20 goals, yeah, like, mm. well, speaks for itself. Like, he, honestly, he's up there. And he was also even part of, you know, the team that, you know, helped us, you know, start winning trophies. He scored those key goals, I think, in the FA Cup final as well, I think. When we, yeah, in 2011, yeah. So he's honestly just, he just, he's just exceptional to me. Um, I, I'll say Paul Scholes as well because I think, like his technical ability, like he, he honestly, his passing, his vision, yeah, he, he was just one of them consistent players that I just rate really highly. I think he was part of the trouble winners as well. Um, so. Yeah. yeah I, I, I hear you on that. I think great choices. Bits and bobs. Who would be your midfield too? Um, the thing is, yeah, you, you, Uncle Yaya, man, like that guy was just, do you know what I loved about him? It was just that, um, you know, um, black players always get called monsters, beats and stuff, but you know, I feel like he broke the mold where they actually appreciated that, you know, technical yeah. ability, uh, we can, we can be called culture and all that stuff. So, um, hundred percent loved him for that. However, um, I'm playing a flat two centre midfielder. And I don't think you can sleep on Roy Keenan's post goals. And this is me trying not to be... I am trying to be fair and not biased, but... Biased. <laughs> no, but hear me, hear me out. Hear me out. No, hear me out. I hear what you're saying, yeah, but, like, we need, we're going by derbies and we're going by Premier League. These two were feared, okay? Dominated. They won games in the tunnel before they even came on the pitch. We forget Roy Keane could play. Roy Keane could score. It was only when he got a bad injury that he altered his game a little bit. So I'm going to go with Paul Scholes and Roy Keane as a pairing. 
Bob, <laughs> Bobby, have you even picked a City player yet? I see you haven't picked say, one. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, picked can, we, one. can we just like stop going to Bob's because he's picking a whole man United? Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 yeah, God's honest truth. Yo, hear me out, hear me out. Trust me, the Zabaleta, I accepted that. I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, okay, fair enough. But I hear what Rose is saying about Yaya Toure. But Terry's asking a pairing, okay? How do you want to play them? And we're saying, oh, Yaya and Paul Scholes could done this and done that. But we've got to look at the actual pairs that actually played together and went and dominated football. You, you guys are acting like these two it's just... It's called a combined 11, bruv. It's not Man United. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 11, and yeah? the combination of Roy Keane and Paul Scholes <laughs> done it all. I'm just saying. Do you know what's interesting? Do you know what's interesting? I, I, I get where Bob's... At. Look, the, the Roy Keane thing's an interesting one for me. I don't know what it is about Roy Keane. Probably one of the most disrespected Premier League legends I've ever ever come across people just think because he's got an odd man image they just think they just think he, he went around acting like he was vinnie jones i think they think we've got it's like a vinnie jones thing he went around he fouled people all you ever hear about with him is when he got sent off when he screamed at a ref when he uh harlan's dad do you know what i mean it's like do, do people remember how technically gifted he was as a football player he dominated the premier league midfield arena for about eight or nine years. This is the guy who went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, technically and physically, with another one of the Premier League's greatest midfielders in Patrick Vieira, and it was a war. And there's no way you were doing it. It wasn't like Vinnie Jones and all the and Dennis Wise, all the other hard men, got anywhere near Patrick Vieira because they couldn't handle it. Like, I would personally go with Yaya and Paul Scholes myself, and I'm not saying anybody disrespecting Roy Keane, but I do feel like people just think he was a, a badge-kissing passion merchant and for me it just shows one you've never you've never seen him play or secondly you're judging him because he's got a thick iris accent and he had a skinhead and you're literally judging what he looked like oh, he must have he looks like phil mitchell so he must have been like that do you know what i mean danny who would you pick mate oh it's easy yaya Torre and paul skulls paul skulls for obvious reasons legend probably man united's best player blah 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 like we know it's skulls like who's gonna argue skulls nobody on yaya Torre, let's not forget he was a holding player at barcelona he played in a double pivot for City for a season as well. So in a 4-4-2 next to Scholes, he'd be box to box. He'd be absolutely fine. And the reason why I want to focus on him more so than Scholes, as much as I love Scholes, he never had the type of influence. I'm talking match-winning performances, mm. direct assists and goals that I saw Yaya Torre do. I saw, Yaya Torre basically did what I saw Ronaldo do uh, and, and basically won games by himself for Manchester City consistently. Mm. There was one goal that he had, Humber who was against where... The ball's come to him. He looked so lazy on the ball like he weren't going to shoot. He's from about 35 yards out and he put it in the top corner. Yeah. He was insane. He was absolutely insane. So for me, like, it's yeah. those two. Like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Skulls and Yaya. Jesus Christ. Imagine coming up against those two. Do you know what's interesting? Oh, you're oh going to have to have you spun. I think, again, what's interesting with Skulls, and I agree with Yaya being in there, I, 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 Skulls won... Champions League semi-final with a Thunderbolt goal scored in an FA Cup final one of the most important goals he actually won a Manchester derby in, in the latter years of his career the last minute header like, this guy won games single-handed they're ones I can just think of but you know it's interesting I think even me and you Danny we're probably the oldest two on this panel Paul Scholes it's hard to remember something so you know that when he used to do the Scholes Gerard Lampard thing they'd only they'd, they'd, they'd almost start assessing Scholes from when Lampard and Gerrard became really good. And it's like, bro, you do realise Skulls won like three Premier League titles before those men even came along. Like, Paul yeah, Skulls... Yeah, before then. Yeah, when he was playing in that, like, number... It wasn't called a 10, it was like a, it was second, a second striker. Second, it was a second striker, striker yeah. Guy was winning yeah. games, scoring goals. Like, like, I swear he got... I swear he scored... A hat, I don't know, I'm not going to say he got a hat-trick on his debut. It might have been a brace on his debut, but he did some madness. Jan, who would be your midfield two? Um, I went with Skulls and Yaya as well. That's why I was saying I'd have David Silver on the on the on the wing almost. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, yeah. We're talking about Manchester derbies as well. A lot of people are forgetting that, you know, and seeing a lot of people in the comments and stuff saying, "Oh yeah, well, United won this." Well, yeah, the whole team won that, so that would be a whole eleven of that team. So it's one of them things you've got to think derbies. I think Yaya yeah, Torre probably scored the most important goal in a derby um, in that semi final. And, final in 2011 because I think that really changed um, sort of the dominance in Manchester and Man United. I think before that Man United went into derbies thinking they would win. I know sometimes City would win but United were 
a superior to us at that time in terms of you know on the pitch we didn't i didn't go to that semi-final at wembley expecting a win um and he single-handedly won that game with his goal um and i think after that man city were able to build on that and go and win the league and then you know we've <laughs> we've kind of stayed at that level since so yeah i think if you're talking manchester derby on top of what he did for city um i still think yaya is very underrated I think a lot of people kind yeah, of say, oh, he's yeah. all right. But you actually look what he did for Man City and them games that he single-handedly won. It's got to be in there. So, yeah, I think Paul's goals speaks for himself. Mm -hmm. um, that's what, that's what we've done with there. More than enough votes for Yaya and for Paul Scholes. And remember, viewers, you can get your super chats in uh, and get this team changed up in any which way you want. Uh, Monster did actually put a super chat in here and he turned around and he said, uh, would we say Giggs is a natural winger like the wingers of the past century, whereas Sterling is the modern day winger where goals is the emphasis? Yeah, no, I mean... Sterling at the beginning was a natural winger. Let's, let's he was at Liverpool. Yeah, he yeah. was. Well, yeah. I, think what I think what Monsoor is saying, though, is like, it's different now. Like the, 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 the wide players now play like an inverted forward role where goal scoring is far more prevalent. I remember reading Chris, read Gary Neville's book Red, and he speaks about how Cristiano Ronaldo almost created this position by coming in from deep to the back post as, as, a, as a winger. We never saw that before. Like Beckham and Giggs weren't doing that. They always, the idea was to stay out wide. You weren't in the box when the ball was being crossed. You were almost at the other side of the box if it went through. So it is different. And Raheem Sterling, that isn't to say like, that isn't to take away from Sterling or Giggs, different kind of roles. Uh, but Sterling's on his way to being a Premier League great, uh, but great super chat um, uh, in there. We're moving on to the, the final part of this now, which is picking the two forwards to go into this. Um, and we can pick these as a pair if you want as well. Um, it's going to be really interesting. The, the individuals that we've got available are going to be Ruud van Nistelrooy, Sergio Aguero, Wayne Rooney, and Eric Cantona. Easy. Isn't it? Who are you going with? Him? Oh, easy for me. Best best Premier League striker in the history of football for me, Sergio Aguero. Hundred um, <laughs> percent. Top 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 quality striker. He, he was. Yeah, I'm joking. He was. For me, he was the best. He's up there as the best striker in Premier League history by far. Him and Wayne Rooney. Not much more to say, is there? Really, Wayne Rooney. What? How much he's won. His influence at Manchester United, he would sit deeper than for me out of the two. Um, them two together would be lethal. You know, I, hear, I, hear, lethal. I hear you on that. What yeah. are you saying, Bits? Um, out of out of respect, okay. Um, I hear what James saying about Aguero, yeah. But there's a man called Eric Cantona. He's called King for oh, a reason. Go to sleep, okay. I'm just saying, bro. I'm Hold, United United squad. Squad. Hold United listen, squad. Listen, yeah. listen, listen. I'm just saying. I hear what Rooney and that did, but you know what? What I'm gonna do, obviously, because I don't want people to think I'm biased. So I'll say Aguero for the sake of saying Aguero. Okay, <laughs> for goodness' sake. And um, oh, it's a tough one. Um, so I have a Rooney or Cantona. Uh, I can't forget that goal that Root scored against Fulham, though, from the halfway line. Just made the mockery. Oh, I'm gonna go Rooney just, just because okay. of obviously um, the the time he had at Man United and also the Champions League win and stuff. Just, and he sacrificed himself for the whole team. I hear that regarding positions. Rose, who you pick him? Who else but Aguero? Obviously, I think he's the best. Um, I think he scored what 180 goals is it in the Premier League or so in like his ten year spell here. I mean, he's won four Premier League titles. He's about fifth one. I mean, if Aguero just, you know, didn't get as many injuries, I'm not being funny. Like, you wouldn't even be debating this. Like, that's how yeah. good. I yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, I would add Rooney as well. I think Rooney, like Rooney's just, he's another exceptional player. He's influence. Um, he also, um, I think he's one of them players that also did really well in derbies as well, from what I can remember. Um, so, yeah, I'll go with um, Aguero and um, Wayne Rooney. Do you know, do you know it's interesting. I, I, they've got three votes each right now. The one thing I'd say about Eric Cantona, and I didn't know, know this until, I know he had a big influence. Obviously, he played for United for five seasons. The one season he, he, he didn't play due to... Um, being suspended for kicking, literally kicking racism out. <laughs> he, United won the four titles in the seasons that he played. But in Manchester derbies, he only played eight derbies, scored 
contributed 12 goals in eight games. Uh, and had like an 80% win ratio. And only he won, played 10, won eight, drew two. And no one's got as many goal contributions in a short period of time as he. I think Eric Cantona had that. Longevity makes it difficult, though. Uh, David, who would be your two? Um, he's not in the list and he's not going in my two. But I would like to give a special shout out to Edin Dzeko. Every time oh he God. played me. No, every time. I kid you not. Every time he played me in a That's... derby, guy would just show up and score two goals. I don't know why, but he would. I'll rate him, but he's not going in. My two is Balotelli, Aguero, and Rain Rooney for the overhead kick. Balotelli. Sorry, say that again. No, no, I'm Balotelli. saying that. I'm saying no, no. I'm not saying Balotelli. I'm saying you know the moment of Balotelli, Aguero. It's obviously Aguero uh, right, that's right, going right, in. Right, okay. Don't worry, don't you, worry about that. Don't I hear you. Now. I thought you, when you said Balotelli, I'm like, David yeah, so lockdown was locked down <laughs> to him. So we've we've kind of agreed. Without, has anyone got any difference of opinion to Aguero Rooney? They think it should be someone else. Go on, Dan. I'm waiting for it. He's coming. <laughs> nah, do you know what? I've I got to be honest. If it wasn't for the overhead kick, I'd have Cantona in there. But that overhead kick is just too powerful. It's just too powerful. And obviously, you can't have Rooney and Cantona because there's two second strikers. That don't make any sense. So I'd have Ruud van Nistelrooy in there, but I don't know why van Nistelrooy is not on the list. He should be. He should be he's on, on there. He's on the list. Him, he's on the list. Oh, was he? Oh, he's on the list. Okay, I'd go yeah. Aguero and Van Nistelrooy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? That's easy. Sergio Aguero, obviously one of the best Premier League strikers, not the best. Gemma's bugging. That title belongs to he Terry is. Henry. And then, but yeah, no, I'd go. Yeah, Aguero and Ruud van Nistelrooy is the best finisher I've ever seen. Simple as that. Do you know what? And I'm about, just, yeah. And, and check his resume. You know, three seasons in a row, top scorer in the Champions League. It's just unfortunate we didn't have a great team around van Nistelrooy. We only won one league title with him, or we should have won more. So, yeah. Do you know what's interesting? Yeah, Aguero and Van Nistelrooy for me. Sorry, mate. Uh, me and Jan obviously had this conversation a few weeks ago when we did Chelsea versus um, City all-time 11 and or Arsenal City all-time 11. I think we did. A, like David Silva, like a lot of City players, I think if Aguero had, had done for Chelsea, Man United or Liverpool, what he has done for C City in terms of the goals, the assists and the trophies there would be more of a push to crown him as the greatest Premier League striker ever, even mm. more so than, than Omri. I think there'd be a push. It just feels like, because, and I mean this with respect to City, because there isn't as much of a media and social media presence. There just isn't the urgency to sort of push this. Look, look what Bruno has done inside the last 12 months. Been amazing. He's absolutely been amazing. But it's already, it's like Cantona comparisons. How, how does he rank in the all-time legends list? Whenever a City player is doing really well, it's kind of muted. It's kind of quiet. It doesn't ever get the same kind of, attention that a star at one of the other big clubs gets and I think feel that's a little bit disrespectful uh Jan uh, would you agree with Aguero and Rooney yeah I think that was the easiest category for me um we're talking Manchester derbies on its own them two are the top scorers I think Rooney turns up every derby Aguero turns up every derby Aguero's got nine I think Rooney's got ten uh, Rooney's got eleven uh, I checked it. Rooney's got eleven, 11. yeah, 11. yeah. Yeah, so it's it's close. Do you know what I mean? I think I, I think Manchester Derby. Wise, obviously, you can shout out people who, you know, like Jekko was very good in Manchester Derbies. Um, Sean Gota was always very good in Manchester Derbies. And to be fair to Gota, he wasn't playing in the sort of team of Veroes. Um, so yeah, a special shout out to him. I wouldn't put him in my combined eleven, obviously, but I think he he did very well in Derbies. But yeah, yeah. I think Aguero and Rooney. It's quite easy. <laughs> there, we, there we there we go we're going to go to the super chats really soon we've had a few that have come through already from Zachariah from Grey Wolf Dinner from the Devil's Advocate from Monster as well so we're going to get the book running on that really quickly guys just shout out the name of your pick for go and we'll see who gets the most and uh, I might have to do a Simon Cow casting vote so Jan who would be your greatest player out of the two clubs oh. over the era? ah that's a difficult one well come to me last Okay, uh, we're going to Bob. Obviously, it has to be someone that's in our eleven. It would be weird to pick the greatest player who ain't actually in the team. But who would you pick, bits uh, out the player out of this team to be the greatest? I think you have to say Rooney. In the hmm. team we've picked, in the team we've picked, Rooney, hundred percent. Look what he's done. All time goal scorer for England, Man United. The accolades. Listen, the list goes on and on. And also, um, you know, both teams are English clubs. And he is English. So, yeah. I, I hear that. How about yourself, uh, Danny? 
for goal. Sorry, I got distracted there. Who did Bob's just go with? Rooney. Wayne Rooney. For, for goal. For goal. <laughs> and, and the team that we've played, and the team we've played, Danny. Danny, Hold the team that we've played just there. So based on the rules, there, so the rules I, can't, I can't have a player that's in the 11 as goal. No, they have to be in the 11. Exactly, oh, that's what I'm skulls. saying. Paul Scholes, Paul Scholes. You've gone with Scholes, eh? Easily one of the best players I've I, ever I, seen in my eyes. Yeah, Paul Scholes. Rose, who would you pick? Going with Aguero, obviously. Aguero's got his first vote as well. David, you're there. David might have gone to the toilet. I'm going to go to Jim while David's missing. <laughs> We're all muddled up here. I'm going to go Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo, Jan. You know what? I'm going to do what Bubs would do and back my boy. <laughs> Damn, girl, we, we really need David back here. David, where are you? <clears throat> Where's David gone? I can't believe it. David's literally disappeared. My vote on here would go with, I would go with Cristiano Ronaldo just because it's quite literally one mm. of, David, who would be your vote for GOAT? For GOAT? Um, I, I, I'll give it Ronaldo. Yeah. Okay. Best player, yeah. I, I went with Ronaldo as well based on the fact that he is the, the best player to have like played in the what? Premier League. Mm. Logical all the time. Just go with nah, your it's free. No, but I'm going with my heart as well, bro. I'm a, I'm a Man United fan, and Cristiano. If, if, I really, if I really wanted to, I would say Yaya Torre because I think he had one of the greatest, like the greatest midfield season in the Premier League of all time. But to be fair, it's Danny, probably both, Ronaldo. Both, both Chelsea boys. He's. I, I said Ronaldo. I would have actually gone Yaya Torre. Like, like, David like well, no, so legit, legit. I remember. <laughs> I didn't I, know, I in didn't that season, exactly. in that, no, I didn't in, his, in that season, Yaya Torre had. Right, I remember he, they were playing West Ham, right, and it was like I think it was two two or one one. He, they had a free kick. He put the ball down. I went, it's a goal, and he just put it top corner like it was nothing. Yeah, but I was like, I'm dead. I'm done with this guy. He's broken. He hasn't, listen, I love Yaya, but he didn't have the greatest midfield um, season no, ever. Was, Ronaldo did because Ronaldo won the yeah. Ballon d'Or with his midfield performance in in, in, a, in a season. So no, but like, on that, mid, but we go, I, I, okay, okay, we're gonna go to some of the super chats here. Um, so I don't usually uh, super chat these, uh, but I can't have the overrated donkey Yaya Toure over Roy Keane. KDB over Yaya as well. Yaya had one world class season. Keane, the third best ever. So Roy Keane yeah. has now been moved into this team. Uh, Grey Wolf Dinner wants him out. Roy Keane, well, I can't even see him on here. Where is Roy Keane? Did I be, oh, there, there he is with his skinhead. Roy Keane's in. Yaya's out. So Roy Keane, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost a fiver to get Roy Keane out of this team. We had a few more of these to jump into as well. The Devil's Advocate, I'm not sure if it's still available to put up. It isn't. We've had too many comments that have come through. Uh, says, uh, five pound uh, for King Eric next to Wayne Rooney um, and five pound to move Cristiano Ronaldo into the GOAT pedestal. So Ronaldo, to get Ronaldo out of the GOAT, goat position, it's going to cost five. Uh, and Cantona is now in and got five on his five pound on his name. So it means Aguero's out. City City fans or rival fans are gonna have to come in here because I think the Man United fans watching are gonna, are gonna end up clearing this team out of City people. We had another one from Monsor says Cantona should be in there for his speech at UA for a loan. So that's another that, that brings him up to seven. The only thing Giggs won was his sister in law. Wow, oh, fair enough. Fair listen, listen. Listen, man, it's uh, it scored, though, to be fair, he, I mean, he scored a lot. <laughs> Ryan Geek scored a lot. Uh, Jason says, Shout out to Carlos Torres, but Rooney for GOAT. Uh, he's put five on that, so that isn't quite enough to put Rooney in there because it levels out. Well, but there we go. If anyone else puts in, Chris, another super chat's come in here. It says, Just because that super chat used the word donkey, put Yaya back in. So Roy Keane is out, Yaya's back in, and Yaya now has a five-pound um, uh, bounty on his head. You can't get him out unless you spend more than to Christopher pounds. on that one, seeing through that donkey word. Love it. Do you know mm. what? Yeah, to, to, I like, Grey Wolf Dinner's a long-time member of the football terrace, but to call Yaya Toure, I don't... I don't do you know what you find with some people? We had a, we had a Chelsea fan on here not long ago, um who every time we spoke about gigs was just like poisonous. And then I sort of clocked the guy's age and I sort of realized that when this kid was like 16, 17, maybe just leaving school in and around his mates, in one season, Ryan Giggs scored and set up about five or six goals. And they were goals that took the title away from Chelsea and knocked him out of the Champions League. And mm. I'm like, 
Ah, there you go. So maybe Grey Wolf Dinner, who we know is a Chelsea fan. Maybe Yaya destroyed him a few times and there's, there's still that there. He says, I was being extreme. Of course, Yaya is a great player. Yeah, I get that, bro. But I reckon there's a little bit of a little bit of bitterness in there. Keep your super chats coming if you want to move this team around. Um, who now, though? I want to ask a question to the panel. I'd love to speak to, to Rose on this one. Who in the current setup at, at City do you think's got, barring Sterling that I've already mentioned, do you think's got a really good chance of moving into one of these all-time 11 soon? Who's not quite there yet? Um, I think Ruben Diaz, maybe. Um, I know he's only just come in, but his impact is is crazy. I mean, when he came in, I, honestly, I wasn't I wasn't really expecting him to like hit the ground running. I mean, I thought we were going to get Koulibaly, but we get this 23-year-old and he's just sorted out our defence. I mean, when company left, you saw how, you know, how bad we were defensively. Um, but he just transformed us. It, it, honestly, I don't even know, like, how he's so good. Like, honestly, I, I'm still in shock that we've got someone that is that good. And I feel like if he stays with us, you know, let's say five to ten years, I can definitely see him. As, Byron, as long as he, you know, plays, like, continues to play the way he's playing now, I can see him being put in that team. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I think he's there. Um, he, he could be there or thereabouts if he continues in this vein. Yeah. For me, I, I think I look at Cancelo as someone. Mm, if, yeah. Cancelo well. and KDB as well. That's the scary thing about this City team. Like right now, you're not just winning titles. You're sort of building legends. Jem, have you got a shoot, mate? Uh, no, I can I run for five, ten minutes? It's cool. Okay, cool. cool. I know yeah. you've got something yeah, else yeah, 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 yeah. Another yeah. super chat coming there too. One from Zachariah and now another five pounds here. The Serbian Terminator next to Rio where he belongs. So that is Vincent Company out. And that is Nemanja Vidic into the team. It's going to cost ten pounds to get Vidic out of this team. If anybody wants to bid him out, uh, make sure you get that done. Thank you for the super chat contributions. It means a great deal to me. Is there anyone in the Man United setup currently bits? that you think has got the potential to to move into the great... Because all the players on this list, even the ones that we haven't mentioned tonight, just to shout out a few of their names. Uh, David David Silva's not in the team. Uh, Kolarov is there. Beckham didn't get in the team. Brian Robson, Fernandinho was on the list. Carrick was there. Joe Hart was down there. We've mentioned Raheem Sterling, Patrice Evra. Like, there's so many very good to great Premier League footballers that can't get in this team. But is there any current United players that you think has a, a legitimate shout if they continue in this vein and maybe start winning some trophies, they can move into an all-time great level when it comes to this, this fixture? You're muted, bro. I think the first thing that comes to mind is um, Dr. Marcus Rashford. I mean, listen, um, what Rooney done goal-wise is just freak. However, the way Rashford is playing... Um, the longevity he's got ahead of him, 100%. And obviously the Portuguese that we know can join another Portuguese in the legacy at Man United is Bruno, um, 100%. As long, Like you said, as long as we can provide trophies and show dominance, 100% those two players, definitely. And um, I'm going to chuck in a controversial one. Um, Dean Henderson potentially is going to be the next Man United goalkeeper for the next eight to 10 years if he gets his run and he gets his way and he dominates could be a shout and my united dominate but there you go there's a lot what of are you, what are you smoking, what are you smoke yeah you honestly, are smoking. listen listen honestly. no listen you're you're top, you're top top smoking. World. no listen you're to what i'm saying world. this is what i'm saying to you yeah look at the context what look what terry asked me okay and i said if f dean henderson goes and bees the keeper for the next eight to ten years and we dominate Football, win loads of trophies. You're gonna to have to put him in the conversation because he's the Jeez, goalkeeper, that's like, right? Bob, yeah, that's, like we, saying, that's like saying Chelsea Scott win, McTominay. Win no, it's not like saying Scott McTominay because Chelsea, that's just, yeah, it is. If Chelsea yeah, it win is. every single trophy for it's, the next it's, ten years, will overtake Man United. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> like you, well, you all, of, all of you, you all of you, United fans, speak for two hours every day about how dead your Blazer owners are, and now you're talking about who's dominating football. It's not happening. It's not happening. He asked the question. <laughs> That's the question. Did he yeah, say what, if yeah, they go on and win yeah, trophies? It's not about, you, it's you know not about being fantasy, guys, it's guys, not about fantasizing, think, though, is you know, it? I, I, you know what I'd say, Bobs? I understand where you're coming from, but do you know what's painful for me? And this is a compliment to City. I look at Man United and I look at certain players. Pogba, Bruno, Rashford. 
and that's probably it right now. You could you could throw Greenwood into that as well. That we know have all got ability and and technique and outputs combined, where they they should be forging out legacies like KDBs, like Cancelos, like Raheem Sterling's. But with how bad our club is run, the lack of trophies we're going to have, the inconsistent approaches. There's chopping and changing managers. The squad's never really being complete and, and built for a particular style of football. The sad thing for me is that we're going to end up with players that were good, but they're never going to achieve. They're never going to achieve greatness because true greatness comes from your individual ability, your longevity and consistency, and, and huge spikes within that of great great seasons. But it, it has to be shrouded with with trophies. I look at Harry Kane as a prime example, one of the best strikers in the world over the last five or six years. Doesn't matter if he ends up scoring a hundred more goals than Aguero. Can't touch Aguero because Aguero's then got those clutch moments to win trophies and everything else. The Spurs very rarely find themselves in those positions. So Aguero's ability to impact semi-finals and finals and, 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 and get his team over the line in title races is easier because then they're always bloody there. They've all he gets more opportunities to do it. And for me, that's the painful bit here. In another 10 years' time, I think we're gonna do one of these again. We'll probably do one, definitely do one between now and 10 years' time. But we'll look back in 10 years and I think there'll be, you'll start to see less and less Man United players added to the list and there'll be a lot more blue shirts uh, when it comes to all of these, all these tests. Because there's no one from the 90s or the early noughties from City that get into these debates. And, and that's with no disrespect, there just isn't. But they're filling up massively now and it, it's a scary thought. And I, if you're a City yeah. fan right now, you just like, there's just this element of the next 20 years, you, you guys are just going to have the best time. And it's horrible. It's, it's I don't know. It's just horrible. I'm, surprised, for me, I'm surprised none of you said Foden. I said, I'm surprised none of you said Foden. Great, great shout. I think, I think, I think out of all the English youngsters that we've got, I think he's the best one. Honestly. I agree on that one. I, I think 100%. Phil Foden's the best one. He's, like, he's past frightened. everyone. 100%. He's, he's fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic. It's frightening. Absolute frightening. I, I wouldn't actually say um, in terms of, you know, if, if You'd ask me about that because I think the age that Foden is, how many derbies he's said he's not leaving City, how many derbies is he going to feature in, you know, to be... So if we're having this conversation in, in even 10 years, we might be having a whole different conversation. So I agree with you. I think a lot of the arguments from Man United players um, to get him in the squad was, what have they won? I think we're going to be the same, saying the same for Man City players. You know, in 10 years' time, what have they won? Say they do win two Champions League, you know it's. But you won't. <laughs> Let, let's just well, let's just hope they don't. Let's hope they don't. Let's just hope they don't get hard. Where, where, well, where they, they do, we're yeah. in big trouble. <laughs> where, the, where, the, where these future, like sort. Terry, I've got to go. Yeah, I see. All right, you, mate. Man. Take care. Bro. Where, that, these, that, where these future debates become really difficult is yeah. the younger generation that may be debating them. Gonna, I mean, David's a prime example. He's a puppy. He's a, he's a legitimate puppy when it comes to this. He's, a, he's he really is. He doesn't remember ninety. He wasn't born in nineteen nineteen. What were you? Were you born, bro? Two thousand and one. Oh, <laughs> so like the point, is, the point is, he wasn't born. He was in his daddy's sack for two more years after the treble was won, and he, he won't even remember two thousand and eight. He was he was seven yeah. eight years old. Like you oh, don't I remember, remember John Terry falling over, but I don't yeah, remember your season. Yeah but, yeah, but you don't remember the season and 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 what went on and everything else. So when it moves into the into the future, recency bias will always play a part in these debates. When this is done on 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 this YouTube channel in ten years time, when I'm retired, sitting back, um, and, and watching the the young pups take over, you'll you'll hear Pete. You'll say things like, "What about Dennis Serban as the best left back?" And the response you'll get is either who. Or never watched him play, so we're leaving him out of the debate. The, 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 but you know, right now we often say like we don't debate before the Premier League because none of us remember it because we were all too young for that. It will be post 2010 onwards. Do you get what I mean? That's it will change mm. and it will change eras because it's, it's hard. Like you know, I didn't mention Brian Robson. It's hard because I don't remember Brian Robson playing. Although there, there are many older United fans that would say he's better than any midfielder both our clubs have had before or since. Um, and that that geezer was an absolute phenom. But it's, it's hard to judge someone that you didn't see play. We had a super chat actually that came in. Sorry, Jan. It no, said here. People in the comments, they are saying like King Clancy. He wasn't here in the Premier League era. As good as he was, he wasn't in it. And then somebody said George Best before. Like George Best is way back, same time as Colin Bell. So there'd be an argument for him. Yeah, we're not going back like that. Yeah, if we were doing all time. <laughs> if we were doing all time. Then you would you would look at people like Colin Bell. You look at Summerby. You you look at these individuals from eras gone by. 
um, and, and you'd have to throw them into the mix. But the problem is, even when it comes to United, I know of what I've read about George Best and Sir Bobby Charlton, but I never watched them play. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't I can't say what they were like. So that's why we do, we, we keep it to the Premier League era. Uh, there's no doubt. Someone here says McSauce S Fridge. I don't know. I, I kind of don't get what you mean. You want me to swap out McSauce, put McTominay in for the fridge. Well, neither are in the team. I don't know what that super chat means, bro. But thank you very much for it. Um, Big game tomorrow. Of course, we're going to be live. We've got five minutes of the show left to go. So if you want to change any of... The combined 11, get your super chats in now, ladies and gentlemen. Get them in right now or forever hold your peace. This is how you've left the team. Yaya's in there uh, with Giggs, Skulls and Ronaldo, uh, who's put in the GOAT category. Rooney and Cantona. Do you know one thing I'd love to have seen in the Premier League? I love This is this is Glazonomics for you. Rooney only played two seasons as the out-and-out -out striker for Man United and scored over 30 goals both times. It was always what was sacrificed. We, we bought other, we bought ran, uh, uh, RVP in as an example. And it was great because it helped us win a league title. Rooney got moved into a 10 or got moved that wide. I just, that's one thing where I'm not jealous in a bit of way, but I wish we'd have carried on spending money because if we'd have gone and got Wesley Schneider, which would have allowed Rooney just to play as a centre forward for another three or four years, I just feel like you would have seen so much more. So many more goals for him. Does that make sense? Like someone put up a thing earlier going, well, Jekko has as many goals per minute. Um, as Wayne Rooney in like Manchester derbies. Like, yeah, but Rooney played most of his derbies out wider as a 10. He weren't playing as the, the number nine, and I wish he'd done more. We've got a super chat from a Liverpool fan here that says Aguero over Can Kane just Cantona. As, oh Cantona, is that what he means? Um, it says can, but okay. I don't I, I made my, my I'm dyslexic, so when I read that, I thought it said can. Maybe I'm am I, am I totally misreading it. Does I say can or does I say Cantona? It says can. It says can. can. But I'm assuming oh, he means can. can sorry, me. sorry. I honestly, when you guys said that, I was like, how bad has my dyslexic brain got that that looks like the word K N A to me? Um, K A N. Uh, just because City don't have the fans to back them, their guy. Um, so that is Eric Cantona out. That's his full. Uh, that's five pounds. So it's now going to cost 15 pounds to get Aguero out. Aguero is back in the team. As one hit from Zachary that comes in that Roy Keane for Yaya, that's not enough. You need another three pound if you want to get another two pound if you want to get Yaya Tori out of this team, bro. He's got a five pound book on his head. We need to be fair to other super chatters. Keep smashing that like button and that share button as well. But I'd love to have seen that. And Aguero, like you said, Rose, if he hadn't have had all the injuries, because it feels like to me, he misses like two to three months a year. If he hadn't have had that, I honestly think he'd be regarded better than on Henri by now. Mm. What are you saying? I mean, I, I, I agree with you, but mm, Terry Henry, man, best player, of, best player of the Premier League, best striker in the Premier League all time. Mm, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Pass, pass. Why pass. though? Why though? Because I, I, technically, I do think Henry is better than him slightly, but you're talking about two players who are neck and neck in terms of overall ability. And if Aguero hadn't have had those injuries, which he did, so I don't put him above Thierry Henry, mm -hmm. I feel like he would have scored. In my opinion, he'd, he'd, he'd have at least an extra 80 goals to his name by now with the amount but, of games that he's missed. Yeah, but for me, yeah, do you know what? I'm, I'm, Henry had that panache. Henry started the cheekiness, the arrogance. It was just a preference. Like, you actually couldn't hate him. You know, you actually appreciated like what he'd done, and it wasn't like, oh, I can't stand that guy. It was like, it would be like, did you see what he'd done? And nah, the panas, the obviously what is French for va va boom, like, ah, oh, nah, man, still, still. I hear what you're saying though with the stats and stuff. I get it, but Henri for me, like one of the few reasons why certain players want to play up front, certain people actually so, love yeah, football. Yeah, but Aguero has the greatest Premier League moment of all time. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. That is yeah, the great. Doesn't. That is the greatest Premier League moment of all time. What's no that? question. Not even I celebrated that goal. You're like you didn't <laughs> yeah, you celebrate really? the goal. No, you didn't <laughs> celebrate the goal. You didn't celebrate the goal because it, it it did you in. That's why. Yeah, if it did you Liverpool win, you'd love I, it. I, I hear that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? the greatest moment? I think about it, right? I, I, everything Bob's has said there about Omri, I get and I understand it because it's he's one of those players like R nine. Like R9 did, like Cristiano Ronaldo did. David David Beckham's a really interesting person for this. David Beckham was an inspiring footballer. 
he was different from a lot of when you think of the Ronaldinho's, the R9s, the Zidane's, Beckham's in that category in terms of influence he had on people. But he wasn't as good as any of those players, in, in, in my opinion. I think most people would agree with that. What sometimes happens is certain footballers just their character shines through. And we see that all the time, right? Like, it's why reality TV is so popular now. Someone's character, there, there are people in YouTube, there, there are certain YouTubers whose football knowledge is, is good, but their character makes them a star and everybody wants to listen to them talk. There are other people out there that I listen to, barely anybody watches, but their football knowledge is impeccable. And I'm not saying Thierry has bad footballing ability compared to Aguero's. The one thing Aguero doesn't have, he doesn't have a personality that any of us care about. I don't even know how many Man City fans. There's oh, they're bringing out a new documentary all about Aguero's life. City fans would watch. I don't think there'd be many outside of City that go. Oh, I can't, I'd love to know how he lives his life. Where with Henri, you'd be like, I'd love to. David Beckham was the same. If there was a new show coming out that's going to show an insight to him and Victoria Beckham's life, everyone would have watched it. So sometimes you have to. Tr For me, what I try to do is remove the character and the personality, the PR and everything else away from the overall football. And then you're left with someone's ability, and then you're left with the most important factor, what did they deliver with it? And I think when you look at ability and delivery, Aguero and Thierry Henry are right neck and neck. Henry has the panache and he has the, the, what it, like the showmanship to, to carry him to a next level. But I, I think I, I like to remove that when I'm judging a football player because a lot of that is just smoke and mirrors, if that makes sense. I don't well, know. There's I, many, is there many strikers that, I ask you this, is there many strikers that try and pinpoint their game to be like an Aguero or to be like an Henri? You know, because anytime a right footer cuts off the left and curls it top bang, we all say that's Henri S. Do you know what I'm I, trying yeah, to but, say? But that's because me and you are old, Bobs. I guarantee what? you. Oh, speak for yourself, you old man. Hey, yeah, hey. But the thing is, I, I don't know this. I'd have to, I'd have, you'd have to speak to young uns. But I guarantee you there are more kids in Manchester and more kids across the country in the last 10 years when they've gone through on goal and buried it have shouted the name Aguero than have shouted the name Henri. So we I, think. I, I, I can back that. I come back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an era thing, isn't it? Like mm. nobody anymore when they're hitting a free kick, no kid on the park tomorrow. He's lining up a free kick and he's going, I'm going to whip this like Beckham. No one says they're going to bend it like Beckham anymore because Beckham ain't playing. It's it's an era-based thing. And mm. you have to be, that's why I try to remove the emotional connection because how I felt about players when I was a child and in my adolescence is very different to how I feel about them. I don't idolise a football player anymore because you grow up and realise that I don't idolise or I don't have any heroes or celebrities for, for, for being a good singer. When I was a kid, though, it was like, oh, my God, you're a god. I love you. Why? Because you sung a song I like. It's stupid. It's, it's a dumb mentality, <laughs> right? But when you're a kid, you idolise. And I think we were all kids and we were young watching Henri, watching Paul Scholes, watching these, these Premier League greats of our era, and we loved them. And it was, you know, we're in the park pretending to be them. I want to grow up and be like you. But when you're an adult, I just think you look at the world a little – we're a little bit more boring, aren't we? We're like, well – how many goals he scored? <laughs> That's what I care about. <laughs> how many goals he scored? Great. He's got a great commercial. I don't even know about any of this stuff. What, what you know, what is he now? Like my, my, my cousin was like, oh, Have you heard this new singer? And my honestly, my first well, how many number ones they've got? <laughs> That's what I ask. I don't think they're any good. They've got no number ones, they're trash, bro. I mean, they've got no number ones. It, yeah, no, it is complete eerie thing. Like, I've hit long shots and shouted Matic. Like that's just that's just how my my generation is. Matic scored an absolute against Tottenham in the FA Cup semi final. Got an absolute screamer for the rest of that year. And that was just me and all my mates shouting Matic or like I can't even think of anybody else. But Matic, I definitely remember Matic was a key one as well because it was just ah, different. No, I, I get that. Where the comment? This is interesting from Kid City. He's a Man City fan, long time view of the terrace. Says uh, you have to be a Spanish speaker like me to appreciate Aguero. His streams are elite for us Spanish speakers. Remember, he's best friends with Lionel Messi, and that's my point. See, there's there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a, there's a barrier because we don't maybe understand the language, we don't get the jokes, we don't get the. There's just something about it. There's again, you know, French certain French people in the UK. We've had lots of them here. Patrice Evra. More people now love Patrice Evra for what he does on socials than what he did on the football pitch. I love this game is a massive thing. Eric Cantona, he's crazy things, you know, that he says. It's the, the, you know, so French people that speak English well, I think that accent is, is so beautiful that it sort of transcends. Aguero, I've never, I think I've never heard him speak English. So, of course, you're not going to have a connection with him. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. you don't really know what he thinks and feels because he's just, there's a translator there. Like, it's an interesting one. But I think Aguero is, is arguably, him and... Silva are two of the most disrespected and underappreciated football players in Premier League history. There's no doubt. Yeah.
I think, do you know what? Like I, like we had this debate last time and I was saying Omri is, is probably the Premier League GOAT. Um, and I wouldn't argue with that. But it's just like, I just feel like the gap, like I said last time, the gap isn't as big as people make out. I think if Henri wins what Aguero wins and Aguero wins what Henri wins, I don't think people are saying that's close. Do you know what I mean? I think people are saying, well, Henri won this and Aguero only won that. Um, but yeah, in terms of him, I can't argue with him. He, he did everything. He had everything. Um, so I'd never argue against that. Um, for people in the comments about King Clancy, King Clancy played, what, one season for City in the Prem. This is an all-time Man United, Man City. And then I think we got relegated. So in the 90s, even though the Premier League was there, Man City weren't always in it. And that's that's why I'm saying <laughs> as Can good as he question? was. I think he came at the wrong time. If he'd have come to Man City now, the player that King Clancy was, <laughs> it'd be a whole different argument. But back then, we weren't doing so great. <laughs> Can yeah, I ask the panel a question, especially you, Terry, as well? The defenders Henri done it against compared to the defenders Aguero done it against. Does Aguero <laughs> succeed against the defenders so, Terry Henri did? My, my answer is going to be very Matt Hancock esh, right? Based on that logic, we have to say that George Best is better than Lionel Messi. <laughs> No, because George Best did what he did dribbling past players and scoring screamers with balls that weren't round, balls that weighed like 10 pounds when they were wet. He did it on pitches yeah. that weren't flat in what looked like still toe cap boots with mud puddles everywhere. And he was pissed. The problem is when you start comparing eras based on what I think the defenders were better, better back then. What, do you know why it's hard? One of the reasons I'd, I'd, I'd fight for Aguero that it's harder now is the level of tactical analysis that can be done by defenders to stop a striker. You didn't have that. That wasn't, mm. it wasn't as prevalent. We, me as a normal football fan, I got Y scout. I can sit here and watch. Every single attacking phase a, a, a striker has, every run, every pass, every shot, I've got access to everything on Sergio Aguero. So if I'm a coach of, of Man United, I could be what I could be showing, I could make a DVD and show it to my defenders the night before or two days when I study this. He goes left, he goes right here. If you do this, they never had that in Thierry on Day, which makes it a little bit easier. Even if you mm. go back further, I go back another 20 years before that, there was not even every game was recorded. So how hard was it to study a player? So th these arguments are, are really difficult to have. There were definitely were excellent defenders back then, but football's just changed and moved on. And I think it's it, it, it's one that you just can't. It's just important. It's like saying now, would Anthony Joshua beat Muhammad Ali? It, 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 no, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. It's just, you know, like, I know, look, I'm not, downgrading what Aguero's done. Great player. Um, uh, hmm, I just think that it, we talk about football being changed and stuff, but the level of player has changed as well. So it would be good to see if Aguero could do it against your Nestas and, and so on. But yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. We had a last last super chat here um, from Strip Bear. It said, just to annoy people, sorry, for Man City players in that need five pounds to move them. So she's put 20, put 20, put 20, 20 quid in here. <laughs> Uh, we, and we can move some City players in. So who who's, who, who that means? We're going to take Vidic out and put Vincent wow. Company in. That's £10 of it gone. I think that's a fair one to do. The other one will be uh, Keen out, Yaya Turi back in, and there's £5 remaining. And, oh, who am I taking out? I'll, do you know what I'll do? I'll give you... No, I'll put the Bruyne in. Yeah, put, put the Brian in for gigs then. Okay, we'll do that for you. Strip Bear, who is a Chelsea fan, stepped up. Is Carl Walker underrated? I don't know. I just feel Carl Walker struggles to get good reputation because he put pedigree chum on his girlfriend's chuff. Do you know what I mean? It, it's a difficult one, isn't it? But it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the video. It's definitely him. So Matt, that was a mad what? video. <laughs> it's crazy. Do you, Rose, do you think Carl Walker's underrated? Mm, I don't, you know, I don't, I think, <laughs> do you know what it is? I think because Cancelo's come in and he's, he does, for... <sighs> I don't know, I, I don't, I don't think Kyle Walker's underrated. I just don't. He just, I, I think he just gets, the, yeah, he gets the, the respect, like the, he gets the right amount of respect. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. I've always felt with Kyle Walker that if, it wasn't free. He gets caught out. Like his pace, his recovery pace helps him out a lot. Yeah. And that's why when I think about, we speak about the other def defenders we mentioned today, the Gary, the Gary Neville, no pace. 
Irwin, you know, these guys, uh, Zabaleta, they were very rarely caught out. They were better defenders and they didn't need to rely on that pace to get them out of trouble. And, um, uh, and they had to be better because if they didn't get caught out, they didn't have the speed to catch people up. But there we go. Listen, everyone who's tuned in today, a massive thank you. Rose, thank you for coming on the channel. Been a pleasure. Bits, David, wonderful as always. And Jan, Always great to speak. Um, everyone who's uh, putting in a super chat, a massive thank you to you. Make sure you're smashing that like and the share button. That's the final team as it stands before we end it after all of your super chats. As you can see, City starting to creep in and dominate, which I think is going to happen in the real world pretty damn soon, uh, I think. But listen, everyone who's tuned in, thank you. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again.